how the classic markets are shaping up. And David Stevens from Coral joins us on the line. Dave, uh, hi, how are you? Good afternoon, Nick. Well, having seen Dave Gutfreund's picture earlier, I'm thinking mine needs <laughs> jazzing up a little bit. It's yeah. very tame by comparison, isn't it? To... You, you're looking very sober, but still sporting that Dubai tan, you'll be pleased to know. <laughs> the Dubai tan managed to sort of hold its own up at Aintree, where, of course, the tans are a, a, a different level altogether. Now, of course, we're between the two great Grand Nationals, the, uh, the Aintree National and the Coral Scottish National at the weekend, but we need you to focus your attention on these classic markets. And we'll start off with the 2,000 guineas betting, if we can. Uh, has this massive move for most improved finally plateaued now? It, it certainly seems to have, Nick. I mean, it, it was a substantial gamble. I think a couple of reasons behind it, and the guys there have touched on it, Firstly, there are doubts over Camelot, who's been favourite for, for this and the Derby and, and just about everything else since he won the, the Racing Post Trophy last back end. But there are doubts about him coming over. And most improved, clearly, Brian Meehan himself is very, very happy with the horse. Um, he's, he's told us all that he, won't, he will win the Craven on Thursday. So uh, look out for a bookmaker offering any odds on that because he will win. Um, <laughs> and, and clearly, you know, he's, he's third in the Dewhurst. He's decent, but... You know, why does it entitle him to be, you know, a third of the price of, of the winner of that Dewhurst, for example, Paris well, Hall? Well, it doesn't, is the, sim is, is the simple answer. I, just walking around your office and talking to your traders and so forth, do you get the strong impression that Camelot is not going to run? I mean, are you really seeing no money for him at all from no. the right people, as it were? If, 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 you know, if, if the money is a guide, then there has been, you know, no support for him at all, um, I would say, in the last month. So there's nothing, that, and that's when you know that's when the guineas market tends to kick into life again. Um, it's around sort of after Cheltenham, and there's nothing to suggest that he is going to come over. But equally, of course, connections. You know, they haven't ruled him out. I think they've said a decision will be made fairly soon. Um, we'll, we, we will simply have to wait and see. But mm. there's, there's nothing from a from a betting point of view to suggest that you know a decision is imminent in his favour coming over for the guineas. And of course the. I guess the comparison everyone cites is St Nicholas Abbey, a very similarly impressive winner of the Race Post Trophy, came to the Guineas, and then that basically, that was his three-year-old career. So I think people are thinking that if there is a classic to be won with this son of Montjoie, then it is the Derby. But of course, as I say, connections will, you know, will let us know in their own time. And, and at, at, at the moment, punters are happy to back against him, thinking he's not going to come over. Well, let's have a look at that Derby market then, Dave. Uh, Camelot 2-1, to one. there's a much bigger break to the rest of them. Let's just leave him out for a second. What's been backed, if anything, at this well, stage? What's the most interesting horse in your derby market, apart from Camelot? Well, I, th I think Parish Hall, the, the Dewhurst winner. Um, as you touched on, you know, Jim Bolger, this is a race he's, he's won before the derby. Um, Bonfire, there was a move for that, actually. Sort of halved in price, all sort of 25s down to 14s. Uh, this one for Andrew Balding finished third in the, the Group 1 over at San Clou. French 15 won that day. Of course, he's come out and, and won this year. Akid Mafid, I, I sort of personally like this horse, and he, he's going to miss the guineas, sort of go to the, the Derringstown Derby trial, I think. But the horse that beat him, uh, David Livingston of, of Aidens, didn't really do a great deal, you know, to, to sort of boost confidence in that. I know you know, it's early days, but, you know, David Livingston got, got well beaten yesterday, so I'm not sure if it's, I'll take a great deal of confidence from that. So, I mean, I mean obviously, I think Mandian, obviously been switched to Godolphin. Um, another Group One winner out in France. He, I think. I think he's very interesting. I think mean, it's one of those. You, if you want to bet in the race and you don't want to back Camelot at twos, which I, you know, I personally couldn't do, um, you are getting double figure about everything else. But it just—it's very, very early days. I think looking at the Derby, um, you know, the, clearly there'll be further clues from Newmarket and then into Chester, York, and all the traditional trials. Um, but of, of those on that screen at the moment, the one that's been the, the best backed is Bonfire of Andrew Balding. Yeah. Let's have a look at the Phillies. Um, a slightly less clear picture, if you like, or a slightly um, deeper field, it seems, for the Kipco 1000. It is maybe 7 to 2, Discourse 6 to 1, Wading 7 to 1, 8 to 1, Lyric of Light, and 12 and, and bigger the rest. Again, I've got to ask you the Bally Doyle question with maybe and, and Wading. Yeah, I mean, it's very much it's, it's Bally Doyle versus is Godolphin. Godolphin. The, the top four in the betting, they're all. I mean, I mean maybe. Yeah, five from five as a as a two year old. Um, you know, and it's one of the old sayings in racing. Is it the, the Guineas is the last two year old race this season? She looks such a dominant two year old. Maybe um, she's by Galileo, so you'd think you know the, the mile shouldn't hold any concerns for her. But then the the, the money of the of the two Ballydore ones. Certainly, the money in recent weeks has been for Wading, uh, another by Montjoie. 
the Rockfell winner. The Rockfell has been a pretty good, pretty, a pretty good classic guide in recent years, actually. Um, she again, she, she's actually favourite for the Oaks ahead of maybe. Um, I mean, I, for me, on, on what they've done as two-year-olds, I think maybe deserves to be favourite. And and I'm, again, I'm not hearing anything, you know, either way. You know, will she come? Will she? You know, as far as I'm aware, maybe is on target for the Guineas. Wading has been entered for the for the now Gwyn at Newmarket. Or, no, no, sorry, Wading hasn't. She's been taken out today, hasn't she? Sorry, um, of the now Gwyn. So she, I don't think she comes over. Um, and then we've got the two, the Godolphin pair, obviously. Um, Discourse, a Sweet Solera winner. Lyric of Light unbeaten in three, including the Group 1 Phillies Mile. So very, very strong form and, and the, the two big stables dominating this one. Quick look at the Oaks market. Again, um, a, lot of the, a lot of the same horses prominent in the market. The front three are all in the, in the front four in the, in the Guineas market, waiting maybe Lyric of Light. Uh, just some interesting ones at bigger prices there, Dave, and, and some that are, are rather less exposed is the wrong word, but rather less experienced and open to any amount of improvement the, are the unknown quantities. Which of the unknown quantities do, do you think you know a little bit more about? I, I, I honestly, hand on heart, I don't, I don't think we, you know, I don't, we don't know any more than the, than the punters out there. Um, I say, that I, I guess for me, the, the big difference is, is that wading and maybe that positions from the 1,000 guineas betting are reversed. And um, I say wading by Montjuic expected that this mile and a half round Epsom will, you know, will suit her better than maybe um, Lyric of Light uh, for Godolphin again another one who's prominent in the, in the 1000 Bettys the, the, the Phillies mile winner at two will suggest that you know in a mile and a half at, at three will be within her compass but again I mean this is you know of, of the four markets that we've seen I would say that the Oaks is, is the one that you know there's less kind of talk about there's less money around for and certainly as I say in terms of, in, in terms of what we know that the punters might yeah. uh, might not I'd say very little OK, let's have a look at this Jockeys' Championship market because you've been ramping this up in the absence of anything else of interest to talk about. Um, Hannigan and Moore, 3-1 joint favourites now. Does Sousa 7-2 and 4-1 Fallon, 11-2 and bigger the rest. Fallon seems to have been the mover, doesn't he? He's only one behind Hannigan at the moment. Nine yeah, well, plays eight. It, it, it's funny, actually, did, how, he's reading, <laughs> the, how, these, these, <laughs> how these jockeys build themselves. You know, they're, they're all tipping each other. Uh, Richard Hughes, obviously, on the sidelines at the moment. Uh, Sylvester de Souza with the new job, Paul Hannigan with the new job. I think Ryan Moore, if Ryan, and, and if there's ever a jockey who deserves a, an injury-free run, I think if Ryan Moore stays sound, I think for me he's, he's the value. We've seen their joint favourite. But, I'm, I'm, you know, you, you say I'm ramping it up, Nick, but the problem is I'm just such a, such a disadvantage. Dave gutfreund has got Bodie Meister, the great story that clearly <laughs> Bodie Meister, the son of Bob Bat, the Americans are going to go mad for Bodie Meister fever. I can see my colleague Simon Clare getting on a plane to Churchill Downs for this one. Are you going to be joining him in business class? I, you know me, Nick. I very much take care of business on this side of the pond. <laughs> <laughs> Good. See you at air then, Steve-O. Indeed, Nick. Looking forward to it. <laughs> David Stevens from Corals.